This morning on Wake Up With Hope, we have a refreshing message from Mark Finley, a special segment on The Ultimate Warrior, and music from Carmen Cruz. Join us. Buenos dias, amigos, and welcome to Wake Up With Hope. <laughs> Have you had a good week this week? Send us a message. We love hearing from you. Wake Up With Hope Facebook page is the place to go and let us know if Wake Up With Hope has made a difference in your week. Yeah, that's right. You know, honey, I have a question for you. What's that? What What does music mean to you? Oh my, you asked me a question I, that I, I could you, talk on and on I know, about. <laughs> I know you love music, so what does it mean to you? Well, I love music. I, I'm a pianist. I took piano for 14 years, um, and I sing, and mm. I've written a lot of songs. You have, so you have. music truly speaks to my heart. It's a way that I communicate with mm. God. It's a way that I have been blessed immensely throughout this journey of my life. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, I have to agree with you that music is so inspiring and it can even lift up our spirits mm -hmm. when we feel down. You know, music is definitely powerful. And today is World Music Day. Mm. Did you know that? I didn't know yeah, that. That's pretty special. That's great. And, and we're gonna take time today to appreciate the beauty of good music. Mm -hmm. You know, let's celebrate with us today and let's fill your day with good and inspiring music that will lift up your thoughts towards heaven. And we're going to get started with a beautiful song later on today's program. But first, let's begin by taking a look back at what took place on this day in history. On this day in history in 1788, New Hampshire became the ninth and final state to ratify the Constitution of the United States, officially establishing the document as the supreme law of the land. The law of the land. What do you generally think of when you think of a law? Sometimes we may learn about it's a law and think it's unnecessary or ridiculous. Have you ever felt that way? Well, even though we may sometimes feel that way, laws within reason are actually very important. Can you imagine living in a world where people were allowed to steal, kill, and cause harm with no consequences whatsoever? It would be horrible, wouldn't it? Hmm. And yet, on the other hand, how amazing would it be if everyone abide by the laws of the land? You know, the ones meant to protect us from harm and loss. And that is why God gave us His law, mm -hmm. known as the Ten Commandments. But more important than worrying about a list of do's and don'ts, He wants us to have that law written in our hearts so that the law of our hearts and lives would be based on the very foundation of mm -hmm. His love. And that is a beautiful thing to think about. It is, it is. Definitely it really is. want Jesus' law written in my heart mm. today. Well, Dr. Narita McKibben from Go Healthy for Good joins us now to share today's segment of Health News. In the headlines today, meat intake and coronary artery disease, diet and depression, and music cancels mental fatigue. Reviews in Food Science and Nutrition has published a meta-analysis on the impact of red meat consumption on heart disease rates. The research has included data from studies involving 1.4 million people who were followed for 30 years. They found that the more red meat that's regularly consumed the higher the risk of coronary heart disease, which is the blockage of the arteries supplying the heart muscle. For every extra 50 grams or 1.7 ounces of red meat eaten, the risk of heart disease rises 9%. The same amount of processed meat makes it rise by 18%. And then consider that many people eat two or three times that amount each day, and you can see why coronary heart disease is one of our top three killers. The incidence of depression and anxiety are on the rise rapidly around the world, affecting people earlier in life, making prevention and treatment of depression a public health imperative. The International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health reports a link between diet and depression. Research has reviewed the results of 22 articles reporting on the impact of various diets on rates of depression. They came to three conclusions. 
Firstly, there is strong evidence they say that people should be advised to consume a Mediterranean style diet with more fruit, fish, nuts, legumes and olive oil and less processed foods, juices, soft drinks and sweets. Secondly, there's moderate strength evidence that micronutrients like magnesium, folic acid and B vitamins are important for reducing depression. And finally, there's strong evidence that public health officials should use their resources to help people maintain a healthy diet and prevent depression. Now, do you like to listen to music while you exercise? And do you find it boosts your motivation? Well, you're not alone, and here's why. A new study by the Human Performance Science Research Group at the University of Edinburgh in the UK examined the impact of music on mental fatigue. Mental fatigue is caused by concentrating for long periods of time, and it can negatively impact not only our cognition, but also our physical performance. And this is especially true when we want to exercise for longer. But there's good news. The study shows that listening to music when we're mentally fatigued can return long distance running capacity and performance back to normal. So next time you exercise while mentally fatigued, Listen to music to boost your performance, though not if you're near a road and you need your hearing to stay safe. I'm Dr. Nerida McKibben, and that's today's health news. Deep on the plains of the African savannah are some of the bravest warriors on earth. Taj Paklov takes us to Kenya to learn more about the Maasai people and talk about the ultimate warrior. Deep on the plains of this African savanna, you find some of the most remarkable people in the world. The Maasai people of Kenya and Tanzania live in one of the harshest environments on the earth. There are so many things that can kill you out here. Wild weather, poisonous insects, ferocious beasts, just to name a few. These nomadic people live on the plains where lions and cheetahs, leopards and buffaloes and elephants roam freely. They are shepherds and warriors ever on the lookout to protect their families and their flocks. The Maasai warriors are some of the bravest people on earth. Many of them armed with only swords and spears have slayed lions and hyenas in order to protect their families and their flocks from attack. These shepherd warriors never leave home without their shuka and their sword and spear. These are the weapons they use against the lions that may come their way. If a lion approaches, the Maasai warrior will take his shuka and wrap it around his left hand. As the lion leaps, the warrior gives his hand to the lion's mouth, for a bitten hand is better than a bitten head. But the shuka neutralizes the bite, and as the lion is occupied with the warrior's left hand, he is then taken down with the Maasai sword or spear in the right hand. As they face the lion, the Maasai warrior shows no fear. This is what makes them some of the bravest warriors in the world. I found it very interesting that the shuka colors are normally red with trimmings of blue, sometimes purple. In the Bible, a covering is a symbol of righteousness. Red, which is the color of blood, represents mercy and sacrifice. Blue, the color of the law, represents justice and righteousness. And then when you blend red and blue together, you get the royal color of purple. So every day that the Messiah warrior faces the dangers on the morrow, they are covered with the mercy, sacrifice, righteousness, and justice of the Lord. These are the attributes that make them a part of the royal family of heaven. The red, blue, and purple shuka can easily be seen from miles away across the brown backdrop of the African savannah. Over the centuries, it seems that the lions have been imprinted with an innate fear whenever they see the bright shuka of the Maasai warrior. The Maasai shuka also serves as a source of warmth by night, shade by day, and a place to sit and rest in their journey. This special covering is the peculiar mark of the Maasai also serving as their passport when traveling between Kenya and Tanzania. As I spent time with these amazing people and learned of the importance of this beautiful African covering, it shouted to me of the beautiful plan of salvation. For just like the Messiah, Jesus, the Son of God, came to this world as a shepherd. 
He came to rescue his flock from the ravenous lion that is seeking to devour us with deception. He came to lead us beside green pastures of grace and the still waters of love. But he also came as a warrior, covered in a shook of mercy and justice. He came with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, to slay the satanic lion. With an it is written, he conquered the tempter's bite. He is the great warrior shepherd that shows us how to fight the battles of the Lord. But then, at Calvary's cross, he was stripped of his shuka, and he received a mortal wound from the lion's bite. He was stripped of his shuka, that we might be clothed in the righteous covering of God. This is our passport to heaven, for through his death, we have the guarantee of life evermore. For soon and very soon, this warrior king will return in the clouds of heaven, clothed in a shuka dipped in blood, with eyes of fire, a crown on his head, a sword in his mouth. He's coming to slay the lion once and for all. And just as a shepherd gathers his flock, the heavenly warrior shepherd will gather his people and bring them to the evergreen pastures above. My friend, you may not be a Maasai warrior, but God calls you to be a spiritual warrior for Him. Remember that the weapons of this spiritual warfare are not carnal, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. God's kingdom is not of this world. In this spiritual battle, we must fight the good fight of faith with the sword of truth and the shuka of righteousness. And as we do, God promises that we shall tread down the lion and the serpent under our feet. Satan's bite will have no power over us. For Jesus, who is the ultimate warrior, will lead us to final victory at last. We cannot lose when Jesus we choose. So choose him as your warrior shepherd and allow him to cover you with his righteous shuka today. Carmen Cruz now joins us as we celebrate World Music Day. She sings the beautiful song, Plan For Me. Sitting here, staring at the wall, wondering if I should be here at all. There's so many things that I wish I could say. My life is sort of kind of a mess How long do I keep going through this? No matter how hard I try Why does life just seem to pass by? Some things we wish could change Free from problems and free from pain How long do I keep waiting here? I keep running around slow I can't go faster Way too many questions And I can't find the answers You said you'd be there for me Forgive my sins, but I don't feel worthy Lord, I know that you said That you have a plan for me Yeah For me Broken heart, I think no one can bend Loss of hope and some of my closest friends So little faith, so many doubts Is this the road to take? But I know that somewhere down the line A little patience and giving you my life You've got the purpose and you've got the plan So Lord, take me now, right here as I stand Some things we wish could change Free from struggles and free from shame How long do I keep waiting here? Running around slow, I can't go faster Way too many questions And I can't find the answers You said you'd be there for me Forgive my sins, but I don't feel worthy Lord, I know that you said that you have a plan for me
can't go faster Way too many questions And I can't find the answers You said you'd be there for me Forgive my sins, but I don't feel worthy Lord, I know that you said that you have a plan for me Sitting here staring at the wall. If you're enjoying our program today as much as we are, don't forget to visit us at hopetv.org slash wake up and share us with your friends and loved ones. And search for us on YouTube to check out our YouTube channel and keep up with us there. We have to take a short break, but when we return, Pastor Mark Finley will share today's devotional thought. Stay with us. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope, friends. Thank you for making us a part of your weekend. It's now time for a devotional thought brought to us by Pastor Mark Finley. I love traveling through the Middle East. The Middle East, the lands of Jesus, are some of the favorite places I have traveled. I've tramped around archaeological sites and I climbed over rocks and bricks and looked at the ruins of those sites. One of the things about ancient cities that's quite fascinating is they have very few gates. Some might have one gate, some have two gates, but most of them have pretty large towers. They're watchtowers. And the book of Proverbs, when it is written, describes the name of Jesus as a strong tower. We find that in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. It's kind of like a strange title for the name of Jesus, isn't it? Think about the names of Jesus. Can you think about some? Jesus is the rock of ages. He's the pearl of great price. He's the salt of the earth. He's the light that lights the darkness. He's the bread of life, the water of life, the good shepherd and the Lamb of God. Now, each of these names reveals something unique about Jesus. Why is Jesus called the Rock of Ages? Because he is the solid ground beneath our feet. When everything else in your life is shaking, when everything else in your life seems to be falling apart, there is that solid rock beneath your feet. That's why Jesus is called the Rock of Ages. What about this expression, the pearl of great price? Often we confuse our value systems. Bec but there's nothing as precious as Jesus. He's the pearl of great price. Why the salt of the earth? If you add salt, it flavors something. It flavors all of life. And so Jesus is the salt of the earth. He's the light of the world. He illuminates our darkness. When things in our life seem dark, but we trust Jesus, John 8, verse 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Why is he the bread of life? He's the bread of life because he nourishes our souls. He's the bread of life because he truly satisfies within. Why is he the water of life? Because when we have that thirst for eternity, he satisfies it. He's the good shepherd because he guides us and the Lamb of God sacrificed for us. But what about the strong tower imagery? In ancient times, people lived in walled cities. They had these large guard towers. The tower represented a lookout, a place of safety. Now, in these ancient times, the fields were outside of the city, so the farmers went out to the fields to work during the day. Now, let's suppose an enemy army is approaching. The guards up there in the watchtowers signal the people watching, working in the fields. And the people working in the fields flee back to the security of the city and its towers. Why is Jesus our strong tower? Jesus is our strong tower because we can flee to him. Jesus is our strong tower because he is our security. Every day as we go out to our work, every day as we take the responsibility of the day, every day as we work in secular employments, we're out there 
And the devil attacks us in a variety of ways, just like the enemy would attack these ancient Israelites. And Jesus invites us to come to him. He is that strong tower of protection, just like the Israelites could flee within the city and be within its walls. What does Jesus say to us, to you, to me? Matthew, the 11th chapter. Jesus gives us this divine invitation. Matthew chapter 11. We're going to look there at verses 28 through 30. Jesus puts it this way. He says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest to your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Jesus invites us to come to him. And we can find in Christ that security. We can find in Christ that safety. We can find in Christ that one which we can hide. You know, I love that old hymn, Rock of Ages cleft for me. Let me hide myself where in thee. The story is that the author of that hymn was walking home one night there in England. The clouds became dark. The thunder began to crash. The lightning began to flash. The waters poured down in this tremendous torrent. And there, Mr. Topaldi wondered, what can I do? Can I ever get home safely? And as he was coming along this pathway, he saw a cleft in the rock. And there, as his strong tower, he entered into that rock, that cleft in the rock, protected from the elements, protected from the rain, from the storm. And then he went home that day and he wrote, Rock of ages cleft for me. The strong towers made out of solid rock in the ancient times were a symbol of protection, a symbol of safety, a symbol of security, a symbol of everything Christ wants to you to be, to be to you, everything that he longs for you to have in him. Tempted by the devil, he is our security. Battered by discouragement and depression, he is our security. In sickness, when cancer racks the body, when we are afflicted with some strange disease, he is our security. He's our strong tower. He's our safety. When personal relationships are shattered, and our marriage is fragmented and there's tension. Jesus is our security. Jesus is our safety. What did our passage in the book of Proverbs say so eloquently? It says that Christ is our strong tower. The name of Jesus is our strong tower. To him we can run and be safe. And so just now he's reaching out to you. Will you flee to that strong tower? Will you find your refuge and security in him this morning? In our program, Wake Up With Hope, will you enter your day filled with hope because you've come to the strong tower? Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you with all of our hearts that you are our strong tower. You are the one who provides security and safety. You're the one who provides hope and encouragement. So we come to you today as we start our day claiming that the name of our Lord is a strong tower. Until next time, I look forward to seeing you for another proverb for daily living that provides joy and happiness. Thank you so much, Pastor Mark. We have come to the end of our program for today, and thank you so much for watching Wake Up With Hope. Now, if you would like to learn more about our program and our Hope Channel family, please visit hopetv.org slash wakeup. You can also share hope 
with your friends. Again, the website is hopetv.org slash wake up. And we pray you have a positive and blessed weekend resting in the love of Jesus. Don't forget to join us right here on Monday morning. We'll start the week with Voice of Prophecy, sharing a morning devotional and many more blessings. So don't forget to kickstart your week with us right here. And if you enjoyed our devotional thought today, please visit hope.study for your free Bible study guides. And may you feel the love and peace of God surrounding you this weekend. And before we say goodbye for the week, we have a Bible promise to share with you. And today's promise comes from John chapter 10, verses three and four. It says the gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Mm, what a beautiful promise of guidance and intimacy in our relationship with Jesus. Just as a shepherd knows each of his sheep by name and leads them with care and compassion, so too does Jesus ultimately know and care for each one of us, mm -hmm. his followers, his Amen. sheep. So let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you. You are our shepherd. And today, Lord, we turn to you. We need you. We need you to guide us along the path that we're going to go on today. And Lord, we, we want to pray that you would hold us in your arms like the Good Shepherd. May we be filled with hope as we think of this beautiful word picture in our minds today. Thank you, Lord, for the rich blessings we received. May they remain in us throughout this day and beyond. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.